This video is taken from one of our party meetings, fantastic monthly meetings where, together with all the patterns, we read, analyze, and realize rules, compositions, and party mentee together, only on party mates. Yep, sounds good. So I'm reading the English. So am I playing the? Okay, I'm not playing the second part of Mento. I'm reading the th rule for cadences. Exactly. The, the rule yep. For sounds good. There are three cadences, namely the simple, compound, and double, and they are made with scale degree one and scale degree five, or rather base uh, note one and base note five. Uh, no, I was right. Scale degree. All right. Then after the scale degree one, other scale steps may occur as desired. Okay. Only one thing that is important. Uh, what does it mean, Alessandro, cadence? Because you are Italian, so you know what is in Italian cadere. It, it, it means falling. Exactly. But some years ago, I was playing a piece with a, a violinist, baroque violinist, and this was little pieces, and now I don't remember what kind of pieces they w these uh, those words was. I have to ask ask to this violinist, but I'm not sure uh, who was this violinist because it was some years ago. And at the place of cadenze, there was written another word, a cadenze. That is something like in Italian a cadere. Do you know what accadere means? means? I think it means happen, right? Exactly. And, and I think that this is a, another possible origin of the word cadenza, because in a, a cadence there are some things that, hap that are happening at the same time. All the voices are playing um, a, a little passage that are clausule, so the clausula the movement of the cantus, of the tenor, and of the basso, bassos, all at the same time. So, so I think that the origin of the word cadenza has accadere, so to happen is a possible correct origin of the word cadenza. Anyway, you can continue. Sure. The simple cadence is when one sets above scale degree five, the simple consonances of a major third and a fifth. This occurs when scale degree five is the same time value as the other notes. Perfect. So in other words, um, we don't have usually with the simple cadence any kind of suspensions, usually. Right. And we with, see in without, the example... Yeah, without, with simple consonances. Right. Yeah. And we see in the example, there's the G with, which is marked with the five going to the C and the G is a quarter note. And, uh, and so is the note above it. So like, that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the time value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a topic that must be treated more deeply because for example, other, in, in other sources, because we have at this point, a seventh. Okay. We can consider actually this cadence has a compound cadence because we have here a dissonance in other, yeah. according to other sources so we can see how rules are yeah important but sometimes all the um, authors of these treatises are not always on the same on the same opinion okay Totally. Yeah. And that might be on, on Yerdigan as well. But anyway, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Okay. So the comp. Let's play only this cadence for listening to it. Sure. Perfect. Great. All right. Uh, the compound cadence is when one sets above scale degree five, first a fourth and a sixth, and then a major third and a fifth, or even first a fourth and a fifth, and then a major third and a fifth. Oh, this okay. occurs when, yeah. yeah, yeah no, yes, sorry, finish. I'll just finish. This occurs when scale degree five is double the time value of the other notes. Okay. So we can see here four, six, three, five. Four, six in this case works like a double suspension, even if the six is not actually dissonance, but because it goes with parallel six, it works like double suspension okay and here we have 
four, uh, five, five, and the dissonance is only four, three. Now let's play the first example. I said that they was the C and the E, these two notes uh, as double suspensions because they are both prepared. Okay, and in the second example, we have the suspension for three. Now, let's imagine that at the place of, uh, in the bass of this G, we have an F then a G, another G, we have the same situation of this cadence, that, that four note called simple cadence. Personally, if we want to make a classification between the three cadences, the first one, as simple in this case, is not so consistency according to this three partition of cadences. A simple cadence, I imagine something that is one in the bass, one, five, one, according to other sources, without any kind of suspensions in any form, because here we have actually a, a suspension between the two upper voices. This is my opinion. Then, obviously, when you realize a partimento or compose a piece, you can do whatever you want. But if we want to make a classification, I think that we have to consider the simple cadence as really the most simple kind of cadence, so only one, five, one. Okay, the double cadence is when? Is when one sets above scale degree five, first a major third and a fifth, and one may add the minor seventh, then a fourth and a sixth, then fourth and a fifth, and then once again, a major third and a fifth, and also the minor seventh if desired. This occurs when scale degree five is four times the value of the other notes. Okay. Perfect. Le, now I have a question for Luke. Luke, tell me why the double cadence is called double. Sorry, I was eating a little snack. Um, <laughs> why is it called a, a double cadence? Um, well, I mean, it's it basically is a double cadence. <laughs> um, you alter, you go to scale degree five once before you see that six, four chord is kind of like your melody goes up to scale degree five in preparation. It does in the last measure. Mm, okay. But double cadence, it means for example, that we have two cadences. So we can imagine, for example, to move the bass in this way, right? So play this passage. Me? You too, uh, or Alexander? Um, Luke. Okay. And then, Five. And then do you want me to get with the uh, blue bass? Yeah, you win the blue bass, exactly. Okay. Okay, this is a simple cadence. This is a simple cadence. Five one, and then play yeah. the green bracket. Now we have the compound cadence because of the suspension. Okay, so simple plus double or so. Simple plus compound we to have, make a double. Uh, yes, exactly. Sorry, I'm tired at this time. Here is half past seven p.m. A simple plus compound. We have um, double double cadence. One plus one. This is the reason of double. Then, if we have only in the bass the fifth degree, it works like a little pedal. So play now, uh, um, Alessandro, now it's your turn. Play this cadence as it is written. Yep, so just a second. I'm going to turn on the organ sound on this thing so okay. people can hear the, the dissonances. Just yeah, a second. Yeah, exactly. All right. 
it's not the best, but uh, it'll do. Uh, I, I think that, I think hmm? that the piano is better because sure. with the organ, when the sound is too much higher, okay, uh, no I, problem. I, I can't see, I can't hear hear you anymore. Okay. No problem. Here we go. Back to the piano sound. Okay, good. Mm -mm -mm. Another important thing, this cadence is called by Nicola Vicentino. Do you know Nicola Vicentino? No. Nicola Vicentino was a musician of the 16th century. He wrote a beautiful book that is L'antica musica ridotta alla moderna pratica, that is in English, the ancient music, ancient of Greek music, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, adapt to the modern practice, so the practice of the 17th, 16th century, and he talks about this cadence as the cadence with the um, bad syncopation because the four is prepared is, so is not mm, this fourth is prepared with an, by another four so the, the preparation is a dissonance and not a consonant so when we have a suspension we have three phases that are preparation suspension and resolution the preparation is a consonant the suspension is dissonance and the resolution is a consonant that is a step lower okay this preparation here is dissonance a four for that we have the bad syncopation he says syncopa tutta cattiva that is bad syncopation good now we can play the double cadence also with the f so in this case the seven play here goes this exactly exactly and now i think yeah we can we can finish our party meeting today with the party bento number three and then next time we can continue with the rule of departures from the key or termination so the different use of the key, so uscita di tono, are like modulations in some passages, right? So, do you want yeah. to play this partimento, Alessandro? Yeah, I, I totally could do it. I want to give Miriam a chance. If, Miriam, if you would like to play this, uh, do you want to try? It's up to you. I'm not, I'm not close to the piano. Okay, all right, so well, I'll do it then. Don't worry, next time, Miriam, uh, re remember, I want you to play Apartimento, okay? If you want, but I think, I think it's fine. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> Actually, sorry, yeah. No, no, sorry. Yeah, okay, Alessandro, here you can choose between six, four, five, three, or only five, three with five, and so four, three with five, and five. Exactly. So, right, ex exactly. Now, start from this point, from this C, using this time 4 6. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah uh, 
uh, you can play this or three five. Yeah. So with the three five. Start. Yeah, yeah. I'll start from the beginning of that bar on the A. So. Yeah. Here's with the three five. Yeah. Only be careful because if you play the E also mm -hmm. in this position, be careful to don't play parallel octaves at this point. Between the That's right. And the abs and the the bass. Only this thing to be careful. So you can, for example, play here a C, or you can go to a C in this point, doubling in this case a fifth. F C that's, A C. That's right. So the solution I did was I took on the E, I took six five, and here's the tenor, it's a C. Yeah. And then so the tenor stays the same on the next note. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then back. Counterpoint into a partimento F E D C F E D C. Try to play from this point using a little canon. Sure. So you said F E D C, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you know, three, three, I, yeah. You know, here's a good opportunity for even a printer. So if I go from the C at the at the beginning of the bar, I can go. Uh, so I'll have, I've just played. Then I can do um, something like. I was going to say that gives me, uh, you know, parallel octaves in the middle voices, the way I did it. Uh, what were you going to say, Ricardo? Uh, can you play again? Sure, I'll do it a different way this time from the C. So. E, C, C, unison, C, C, and G. That's right. And that solves the counterpoint problem. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, use this voice in the top voice. C, C, and then jump up to the F. In this way, we can hear the canon with, the canon with a leap. All right. Here we go. So from the F. Yeah, the F is the fifth, right. Exactly. Right. Major. Right. So, so from the, from the beginning of the bar. Exactly. Now you come back with the natural F, right? That's right. If you are looking for a familiar place where you can learn and share everything about Partimenti, today it exists. Get to know enthusiasts like you from all over the world, learn from all your future friends and share your skills with them. Join Partimates, the Discord server entirely dedicated to Partimenti improvisation and composition.